Uh, hi everyone. Today I'll be talking about web push channels, which is uh, a pubs up uh, paradigm and channel based push service. My name is Mansimar Kaur, and uh, I work as a software developer intern with the storage team of Mozilla. And uh, I got selected for it through a program called Outreachy. And I've also contributed to Brackets, which is a code editor by Adobe. Uh, now, uh, what exactly is Outreachy? Outreachy is an initiative of the Software Freedom Conservancy, and uh, it's open to participation for women, transgenders, and other underrepresented communities. Through Outreachy, free and open source uh, software organizations hire interns uh, to work remotely for three months on projects in collaboration with mentors. So what I'm talking to you about today is basically my OTG project. And uh, uh, the organization that I'm working with is Kinto. So uh, uh, a couple of points about Kinto and why it's so amazing. Uh, Kinto is basically a minimalist JSON storage service, which is being used and developed at Mozilla. And it has been released under the Apache V2 license. So uh, through Kinto, you know, you can create great user-facing interfaces. Which, uh, which, uh, which can be synchronized over multiple devices. And when you create a web API, there are multiple number of times you know, you're worried about handling uh, cross-origin resource sharing, or maybe you want your web, your web app to be very secure. You want to take care of, uh, uh, the, you take care of uh, the privacy of the users through encryption. So when you use Kinto, the path between your great idea and the deployment to production will be quite short. And uh, we at Kinto are firm believers of the fact that data, the, uh, that uh, user data belongs to users and not necessarily uh, you know, the, the application. So we believe that uh, the application should be decoupled from the storage location. And uh, now coming to the mutualization of services and self-hosting part, which basically means that the backend is uh, deployed, uh, scaled, and secured only once, and which is awesome. Uh, now, those of you who want to, you know, start contributing to Kinto or want to use it, you can uh, you can join our IRC channel, which is hashtag Kinto on irc.freenode.net, and you can also join us on Slack, and you can find us on GitHub, uh, on GitHub.com/Kinto. And uh, now coming to address the elephant in the room, which is my project, uh, what is WebPush? Now, basically, native apps have had the privilege of, uh, you know. Uh, sending engaging and timely content to users since a very long time. And the web is still following. Uh, so, you know, maybe you're busy doing some other stuff. You're uh, folding your laundry and you're connected to the internet or you're surfing some other website and you've allowed another website to let you push notifications. So they can, uh, they can send you notifications with whatever new content is available. Now, why is it exactly called web push? Because uh, the data that is being sent to you is basically being pushed by the web, uh, web app server to you, and it is being displayed to you in the form of a notification using the show notification API. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, for a website to be able to push you notifications, it's very essential that the website ha uh, that the uh, website has an active service worker. Now, what is a service worker? A service worker is basically a JavaScript, JavaScript file which acts as a, which you know which uh, is a background uh, worker, and it, it is able to control the web pages and sites it is associated with. Um, it basically acts as a proxy server between your browser and the web app server by routing data between them. Uh, and uh, a, a service worker is active and keeps working even when you're not on that particular web page or website to which the web uh, to which the service worker is associated. And uh, it even uh, it even keeps running during browser restarts. That's that's quite powerful. And for like when when there's power, there comes responsibility. So um, uh, service workers can only can only be registered over web pages that are served on HTTPS. And uh, since a, a service worker is not associated with a particular tab or just page, it cannot handle DOM, but it can uh, send uh, send it can it can send events to it. And uh, in future, service workers will be able to you know uh, support geofencing, which is basically uh, Geofencing is an API in which, uh, uh, you know, uh, there'll be geographic boundaries which can be marked, and when your device crosses that, uh, you'll be able to receive notifications. Now, um, uh, now that uh, uh, basically, when uh, you uh, visit a web page uh, which has a service worker associated with it, what happens is through service worker container or registers call, you um, uh, basically a, pro a, a promise gets resolved to a, a 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, um, so uh, through service worker container or register, after this an object uh, is returned. That object is basically the registration of the service worker. Once the registration is done, the service worker file is downloaded on your uh, on your browser, and this happens after every 24 hours or so, and can be done uh, you know even in a lesser time. And uh, if that file the file that is downloaded is found to be new, it is installed. And uh, if uh, if your browser is right, uh, if your browser is not using the previous uh, service worker file. Then uh, the new one will be activated, and once the activation is done, the first step of the first step to you know be able to receive push notifications is done. Now, uh, coming to the next step, basically when you visit a website, you must have seen that you get this uh, pop-up kind of thing, which you know asks you ask your permission whether you'd like to receive some notifications. You can always receive you can always choose to receive notifications or to block them. Once you click on always Reser always receive notifications, what happens is Push manager dot subscribe is called. What this does is it uh, subscribes uh, it, subs uh, it uh, subscribes the service worker with the push push server so that it's able to uh, you know uh, receive push notifications. What happens with push manager dot subscribe is a a, a, a promise is, uh, a, basically a promise is uh, returned which resolves into the uh, subscription. Now what happens? Uh, okay. Now now that I mentioned the push server, what exactly it is? It's, it, it basically acts as a middleman between your web app server and the client, routing the payload between them. And uh, what happens is the service worker has a communication channel with the push service. Uh, now talking about the UAID, UAID is the user agent ID. What happens is there is a communication channel between the browser and the web and the web push server. That uh, that uh, channel between them is recognized with the UAID. So if a particular uh, uh, if a particular user, <coughs> if a particular user has uh, 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 basically um, given permission for uh, for uh, uh, for uh, the push notifications, uh, the server will be able to uh, send information with the help of this UAID to your browser. Now, when the browser receives the information, it has to be sent to the uh, to the so uh, to the uh, service worker that is involved. Now, uh, to be able to send that information to the service worker, the browser identifies it through a channel ID. So through the channel ID, the service worker is able to receive the information. Now, coming back to the part where uh, we've uh, you know, uh, sent this request for subscription to the, push, uh, to the push server. Now, what the push server does is it returns, uh, it returns a capability URL and encryption keys. Now, talking about the capability URL, on the internet, there are two ways in which we can access information. The first is through passwords. And the second is through obscure URLs, you know, which contain information. And people who can, people who should be able to access that information, only those have those URLs. So capability URL is just that. And encryption keys are for encrypting the payload that will be sent across in the uh, in the push messages. So um, the push server sends back the capability URL and encryption keys to the service worker, and the service worker sends them back to the sends them. Uh, sends them across to the web app server, so the web app server when ha uh, we so that the web app server can send notifications as and when they have to be sent. Now, talking about the web push channels that I'm creating, in that what happens is once to be able to uh, this is a sample request uh, which uh, sends across the subs uh, the subscription, the uh, push notification subscription to the service. So this is basically a post request in which the uh, endpoint URL, which is a capability URL. And the keys are being sent across. Here, I've used HTTP pi to, you know, uh, send the example request. And uh, this is my uh, so, server. Uh, this is my URL. And the endpoint is sla slash subscriptions. And uh, what you can see in the form of auth token is basically a basic auth, which is used for authentication. Once I've sent the post request, uh, this is the example response that I get which is 201 created. What happens is this subscription has been created and saved uh, for uh, uh, future reference, you know, when a subscription has to be, when, when a push notification has to be actually sent to the subscriber. Uh, now, uh, what uh, basically the service that I've created is, uh, is a PubSub uh, service as I mentioned in the starting. So a little bit about what PubSub is. Now that the subscription has been done, and we've allowed uh, the web app server to send us uh, notifications. We need to inform the uh, web app server about what uh, inform about what things we you know require notifications. 
So what, pub, uh, uh, what, uh, how this is done is through PubSub channels. Basically, uh, PubSub is a paradigm in which there are publishers and then there are subscribers. And uh, the, publishers, uh, the publishers are the ones which send out information and subscribers are the ones which want that information. And uh, both the publisher and the subscriber, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the publisher and the subscriber, both of them, uh, without, uh, like, uh, basically, uh, the publisher is able to send across uh, information on a channel. It is not aware of how many subscribers are there, or, you know, um, like, not directly sending it to each one of them. Basically, there's a channel, just like a TV channel, on which you can just send across the information, and the publisher publishes the information, and the subscribers which have subscribed to a particular channel, they can access that information. <clears throat> now, uh, coming to the part, how to subscribe a channel. To subscribe to a channel, you basically have to send a put request uh, on the endpoint slash channel, slash channel ID, slash registration, where channel ID is basically the channel name. And for example, if you, for, for uh, example's sake, I've used the form builder update, uh, 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 a form builder update channel. And channels, uh, um, basically, after you send the put request, you get an accepted request, which means that uh, the server has acknowledged the fact that you want to be informed about uh, uh, whenever there's a uh, publish, uh, when, whenever there's a message published uh, on the uh, on this particular channel, the one which the user has just subscribed to. Now coming to the part when there's some changes in some data, and uh, you know you need to publish to a channel and to inform the subscribers about the uh, whatever uh, uh, changes have taken place. So what happens is um, a post request is sent to the push server, uh, and the data payload is encrypted using the encryption keys which were sent with the subscription. The subscription that we uh, received initially when the user had allowed us to send them push notifications along with the endpoint URL. So um, this, uh, the, the, in, those encryption keys will be used to encrypt the payload and send across the, post, uh, send across the push message along, uh, in the form of a post request. So the endpoint here is slash channel slash channel ID. Now, uh, the example response will be 202 accepted. And as I uh, told you that uh, data payload will be encrypted and uh, it will be authenticated through the endpoint. And for encryption, uh, we've used web pusher. Uh, and uh, when uh, this uh, uh, push message will be sent across, it will be sent across with a TTL header, which is a time to live header, which uh, tells the push server for how long the message that it has been sent has to live on the server uh, when the user is not online. So once the push service uh, receives it, it can send it across. Now to summarize the entire uh, process that uh, takes place, what happens is uh, you get a pop-up saying, would you like to subscribe to notifications? You say yes. So what the service worker does is it sends a request to the Mozilla push, uh, to the push server, basically. And uh, the push server sends across the endpoint and the encryption keys. And uh, after you get the endpoint and the encryption keys, you send it to the web app server. The, those that subscription is saved, and now you have to inform the server about what um, what channels you want to subscribe to. You send across a put request, and you inform the server about what uh, uh, channels you want to subscribe to. And after you've uh, subscribed, and say some data changes happen, and uh, now you need to be informed about it. Uh, the data will be retrieved, and uh, the encryption keys will be retrieved, and the encryption will be done, and the payload will be sent across, sent across to the push server. And then the push server will uh, uh, store it until uh, it can directly pass it on to the service, uh, pass it on to the browser if the user is online. If the user is not online, the message will live on the server for uh, the time specified in the TTL, which, is, which was the time to live header. And uh, uh, when the uh, uh, payload is received, the payload is decrypted and sent to the respective service worker. And the service worker decides whether uh, it has to be shown in the form of a notification through the show notification API, or uh, something has to be done in the background. So that's about it. Thank you.